Hey there, darlings. Welcome to The Farmer's Table. My name is Jess. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. I am so glad to have y'all with me in my kitchen today where I'm going to show you a recipe you may have never heard of before. This is Tarator, which is a cold Bulgarian cucumber soup. Now, I learned about this just the last couple of summers from Will. Um, if you watch my other channel, Roots and Refuge, you're familiar with Will. Uh, he often brings Tartor for lunch during the summer. He shared it with me and I was like, I need this in my life. If you're familiar with tzatziki sauce, this is kind of in the same vein as that. Um, Will picked it up because he lived in Bulgaria for a little while after he graduated college studying permaculture and stuff. And this is a Bulgarian recipe. It's extremely simple and I don't ever measure it, but today we're going to kind of do a roundabout to show you the process. This is very refreshing. Grab a knife. And it's a really great way to use cucumbers if you've got them coming in from the garden. So I ran out to my garden this morning, grabbed a few cucumbers. This is a white skinned variety of cucumbers, but you can use any kind. Um, I personally like the crisper, smaller kind of pickling cucumbers for this recipe. You could use a big slicer that's more watery and has larger seeds, but I kind of like the crispness of this um, because of the texture that it lends to the soup, but that's just preference. Normally I make a bowl of this at once and I go ahead and just mix it together in the bowl. I'm gonna store it in the fridge. Um, I'm the only person in my house who eats this, so I'll make a big bowl of it and eat on it for lunch for a few days. Now obviously if you just wanted to make like one serving or if you wanted to make a lot, you could do different ratios, but I typically use a few medium sized cucumbers for this. And I'm going to just cut these into small pieces. Again, this is preference. I typically want to do small bite sized pieces so that it's just nicer to eat with a spoon. Next, I've got a handful of fresh dill that I just harvested. Um, as far as an exact measurement here, I mean, before it's chopped, this is probably about half a cup. I don't know what it's gonna fit on once it's chopped. Again, you can play with this. I love dill, so I like to put a lot of it in, but you could go with less. If you wanna use dry, just make sure you're using the dill weed um, rather than the dill seeds, because this is the greens. Oh, it smells so good. We actually, you know, dill, I live where it's hot, and dill typically grows in cooler weather so my dill is all starting to go to seed now which is fine because i use the bouquets for making pickles but uh, we actually planted some more in the high tunnel and i'm hoping we can get some more dill going we put some cucumbers in the high tunnel too because i love tart i love this soup i could eat this every day um, it's so light, it's so refreshing. And unfortunately, in a hot place, both cucumbers and dill are a pretty short season thing. So the window of enjoying this is not as large as I would like it to be. So hopefully we can extend that. All right, I'm gonna chop this dill. Um, I picked the thicker, heavier stems out. If your dill is younger or store-bought, you might not have those. Mine is, like I said, it's starting to go to seed. So I've got some bigger stems to pick out. Um, you can chop this as fun as you prefer. If you don't like big bits of herbs, you can take it down to really small. If you're going with dried here and you're doing this much, like a few cucumbers, I would say at least a quarter cup of that dried herb. All right, here we have it. Big old pile of dill. Now I have some walnuts that are going into this soup. I suppose you could probably sub this for other nuts. I like walnuts though. Um, they're pretty affordable as far as nuts go. Again, also a rough chop on this, just making very small, easily bite-sized pieces. I mean, I guess an entire walnut is bite-sized technically, but I really just want this for the texture and the flavor it, ad it adds. I don't really want any like huge chunks of nuts in it. Um, probably like half a cup of chopped nuts. Again, preference, you could go heavier on this if you like it. All right, next we wanna press a few cloves of garlic. 
You could also roughly chop this. And when I say a few cloves, I mean probably like five. <laughs> if you don't like really heavy garlic, you can back off of that a little bit. And then we'll mix that in. Now here we're gonna put in about a cup of yogurt. The amount of water you add to this is really gonna be dependent on what kind of yogurt you use. Homemade yogurt is usually a little looser. Of course, you can strain it. If you're buying store-bought yogurt, you could do Greek yogurt, you could do plain yogurt, as long as it's not sweetened. Um, you can do goat's milk yogurt, but we just want about a cup in here. Just mix all of this. I've got this jar. I'm actually just gonna put my water in here to rinse out what's left of the yogurt. Now we wanna add salt and pepper to taste. You wanna go mild on it your first time and then you can always add it after you've added the water. All right, so here's the soup. Now I'm gonna mix in a couple cups of water. Um, again, this is gonna come down to preference. If you want this more saucy than soupy, you don't have to put as much water in it. Yeah, I don't even think I'm gonna put the whole two cups in. All right, this is kind of the texture we've got going on here. And then you top it with a drizzle of olive oil. Now, I always get a little bit right after I mix this, but um, I find that this, I think it tastes a lot better if you let it sit in the fridge for at least like half a day. Sometimes I'll make it the night before if I know I wanna eat it for lunch the next day. I'm gonna cover this and refrigerate it. This stays good in the fridge. I usually eat it all within a handful of days, but I mean, it stays good in the fridge for at, at least as long as you would expect these ingredients to be fresh, like yogurt and cucumbers. The cucumbers are gonna get more soft the longer they sit in the fridge in liquid, but. So good. If you like yogurt in any sort of savory application, if you like cucumbers, if you like tzatziki, this is something that I think that you'll really like. The walnuts bring in kind of an earthy flavor, and of course it's super fresh with that dill and the cucumbers. And then the yogurt make, makes it pretty satisfying. Um, as I said, you can add more water if you want. That's gonna come down to preference. I suggest adding less, trying it, and then seeing if you want more. It's just so good. All right, I'm not gonna sit here and eat this entire little bowl on the camera. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever tried anything like this before. If you do decide to throw some together and try it, let me know what you think. And if you have any recipes like this that are a great use of garden food that are maybe not typical in our American diet, uh, share them because I would love to try them. I think that um, whenever you start gardening and you're wanting to eat fresh out of the garden, a lot of times leaning into other cultures and learning from them is a really great way to use garden food. And you might discover something that it's an absolute delight that you'd never even heard of before. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.